Shlomo from Tul Lebanon, Shlomo from Mount Lebanon. What is the difference between Phoenician and Syriac alphabets? Actually, there isn't any. Syriacs use the Phoenician alphabet of 22 letters called Olaf Bet. Only the shapes of the letters have been modified due to evolution over time, but the names of the letters, their pronunciation and their grammatical rules have remained the same. The Syriac Olaf Bet or alphabet has three scripts. One is monumental and called estrangelo. One is cursive and called certo. And one is intermediate between the two shapes and it is called Madenchaya. In the first line we can see the Phoenician script. Under it the estrangelo. It is the equivalent of capital letters. Then the intermediate script called Madenchaya meaning uh, Eastern because it is used by the Eastern Syriacs like the Chaldeans and Assyrians. And the last line shows the cursive script called Serto and simply meaning script. There isn't necessarily a script older than the other. These characters probably appeared simultaneously with the need of cursive and monumental expressions. Estrangelo from Sert Evangelion, meaning the script of the Gospels, was the monumental script. Its prominence was proportional to the extension of the territories of the Syriac churches from the Mediterranean to Mesopotamia. With the uh, many Arab and then Turkish invasions, the Syriacs lost the vast fertile territories and reduced their land to the mountainous areas of Nineveh for the Assyro-Chaldeans, Turabdin for the Syriac Orthodox, and Mount Lebanon for the Maronites. They became three groups geographically separated from each other. The isolation of the Christian Syriacs in these three separate mountains limited the use of the monumental script to sporadic occasions, making the Madenchaya and Serto look like identity scripts. Estrangelo remained, however, the principal script for all Syriacs. Serto is not the expression of a Maronite identity, and this is testified in Our Lady of Elish and in Our Lady of Kirke, and most probably during the entire medieval period. Some epigraphists have called the Elysian inscription the Maronite script. Its specificities are the very squarish or geometrical letters with perfect closed circles for the letter wall. This Maronite estrangulo script appears again in Our Lady of Elige on a piece of wood. The geometrical forms are very obvious, especially with the circle of the letter wow. This fragment is a piece of the pattern. We read, Nehwe Sevionoch, may your will be done. Pkirke is also a perfect example of the Maronite square script. Its inscription is on the pediment of the patriarchal monastery. Ikoro Dlevnon Metihevle, meaning the glory of Lebanon will come unto thee. This biblical verse from Isaiah 6013 is written in Syriac, Latin, and Arabic. The sharp, squarish letters of the Syriac Maronite script are in full contrast with the curvilinear movements of the Arabic calligraphy. The same sharpness of the Maronite script appears once again in this metal version of the biblical verse on the upper right side. This culture of Saint Moroon is also in Kirke, but much more recent. Next to the saint is a declaration of the Chalcedonian Christological dogma that defines the specificity 
of the Maronite church compared to the rest of the Syriac churches. The inscription says, Train kionin, had aloho, kad lo plig, of lo shachlaf. Two natures, one God, indivisible, unchangeable. This modern monument shows the continuous use of estrangelo in the Maronite church. The sharpness of the squarish Maronite script appears once more in St. John Church in Zgorta, painted by Saliba Dwehi. All the names of the apostles appear in beautiful squarish estrangelo. To the right, Mor Matai, Tumo, Yaakov, and Mor Yohanan. And to the left side, Mor Petros, Mor Andraos, Yaakov, Bar Halpai, and Shimon. If the etymology of Estrangelo is from Sert Evangelion, meaning the script of the Gospel. This is obvious in all Syriac Gospels, starting with the Codex Rabilensis that is entirely written in Estrangelo, whether in the illustration pages or in the pages of text as shown in many Gospel manuscripts. The regularity and monumental aspect of the Estrangelo script is in itself an aesthetical effect. Other Gospels show the Estrangelo monumental script on their illustrations and titles, leaving Seto for the text, like here in this example of Coruzuto uh, de Matai, the preaching of Saint Matthew. Again, in this Syriac book, we see the cursive Serto script in the two paragraphs and the monumental estrangelo around the cross. This cross inscription says, Bochen Dakar, la belt vovain, by you we strike our enemy. The same inscription is again in this manuscript, to which the author added, Hurul Wote Usavarbe. Look at him and hope in him. Once again, the text paragraphs to the sides are in certo cursive script. Estrangelo is the script that unifies all Syriacs. This book, for instance, belongs to the Assyro Chaldean tradition. It uses Estrangelo for the title and Madan Chaya, meaning Eastern script, for the text. The title mentions the Feast of the Cross. This second book is a Maronite Shemto. It also uses Estrangelo for the title, but Serto for the text. So the Estrangelo appears like the common element for all Syriacs. With the isolation of Syriac communities who had to endure persecutions, famine, and genocides, the monumental mentality regressed, leaving more space for cursive, which is why we tend to find so many manuscripts using only Serto. This phenomenon went as far as considering Serto as an identity script. It was even used on monuments like the statue of Saint Maroon in Rome. On this statue we read in Serto the Psalm 92.12, Zadiko Achdeklo Nepra Wach Arzot Levnon Neshwa Mor Morun Avo Deito Morunoito. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Saint Morun, father of the Maronite Church. But Seto shouldn't be considered as an identity script. Kirkus pediment proves exactly the opposite. Another interpretation error is often made concerning the vertical script. Some people pretend the epigraph of Elij was installed vertically by mistake. But if we carefully observe the design of the cross, we see it is definitely not twisted. Syriac script can be written horizontally as well as vertically. And the greatest evidence are the frescoes inscriptions. Here, 
in Edith Church, Dionysus and Yaakov are written in vertical estrangelo, and a fresco cannot be twisted. Again, in the church of Behdidet, Marcos is written in vertical estrangelo. And to push further, this inscription, dated 1628, in Marshalita of Gosta, displays the Seto script in four different directions. And the same phenomena happens again in 1656 in St. Anthony the Great of Daraon. Those are the three Syriac scripts, Estrangelo, Serto, and Madanchaya, all derived from the Phoenician alphabet. In the next episodes, we will develop the subject of composition in the epigraphs, as well as their abstract and figurative art, and the message they convey throughout their relationship to the Syriac inscriptions, because this is our art, and art reveals a dimension of our mentality and identity. Shlomo from Tul Lebanon, Shlomo from Mount Lebanon. Thank you.